you have your Bibles, turn with me to the fifth chapter of St. Luke. I'm going to start with verse 12. My thought would be overcoming. We have to overcome. And that's one of the hardest things in our life is to overcome the enemy. But God will make a way for us. God will help us because of Jesus Christ. In the 12th chapter of Luke's gospel, Jesus was ministering. He was in a certain city, and while he was in that certain city, there was a man that was full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. This is the first thing that man has to realize and to do, is to call upon the Lord in the time of need and trouble. No matter what your trouble is, no matter what your circumstances might be, the first thing people have to realize is you have to seek the Lord and call upon Him. Amen. When this man, being full of leprosy, saw Jesus, he fell on his face. He humbled himself. Amen. And he besought the Lord he said, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me whole. And secondly, we have to have faith. We have to humble ourselves. We have to be willing to come to him. And we have to be willing to call out and to cry out unto him. And secondly, we have to have the faith to believe in him. So Jesus, he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Never heard him say, I won't, but he always will say, I will. The Lord has never turned nobody down. He, he never turns us down. We can always depend on him. We can always count on him, giving us the desires of our heart according to his will, not our will. Well, sometimes in our will, we ask foolishly. Yes. He said, I will. And he spoke three words, be thou clean. We don't have to go through a whole uh, paragraph of prayer. We don't have to say a whole lot of words. He's not interested in all of our fancy words and speech and our eloquency. All he is concerned about is the sincerity of our heart. If it's only just a few words. If it's just, Lord, forgive me. Lord, save me. That, that's just as good as saying a whole paragraph of things. And he spoke to the man and he said, Be thou clean and listen. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. I'll tell you, when, when the Lord does something, he doesn't fool around. It happens Instantly. <laughs> it said immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Mm -hmm. And we've been asking the Lord for things for months and months and months and years and years and years and it seemed like it hadn't come to pass yet. You know what's wrong? We're not believing. This man believed that Jesus could make him clean, make him whole. But when he touched the man and he healed him and his leprosy was gone, he charged him, Jesus says, said, Tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. See, he had to go to the priest. He had to get proof so he could come back into society and come back in with the people. Because they lived in leprosy colonies. They, li they lived to themselves. But so much as the more went their fame abroad of him, Great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him by their affirmities. For hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, we've heard the same thing over and over and over and over. And it doesn't get old. When are we going to learn? We don't have to keep going over and over and over. 
the Lord can work instantly in our lives. And when we when the Lord does something, it goes out. People will go out and tell. People will go out and testify and tell what the Lord has done. This is something we don't hear much of anymore. People testifying and, and telling, well, I was this and I was that and I was sick and I was dying and, I, and all these things. And the Lord touched me. The Lord healed me. Nobody is testifying. Nobody's telling what the Lord has done. So other people are out there dying because nobody is standing up telling about what this man is doing in people's lives. Jesus is not dead, church. He is alive. Amen. We don't see Him in the natural because He's not in the natural. He's in His glorified body. He's went back to His original estate. He's went back, took His place at the right hand of God the Father. He's there being our intercessor. He's interceding for us today. He's just as powerful and alive today as He was when He walked in the fleshly body on the earth. And people heard about what he was doing. Because great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. See, they saw what happened to the man who had the leprosy. But Jesus withdrew himself. He went into the wilderness and he prayed because we all have to have time alone with God to talk to God, to, find, to seek God's will for our life to refill us, to renew us, to strengthen us every day. If not, we become weak. And we become... But it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, not doctors of the physical body, but doctors of the law. They were sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee, out of Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. See, wherever Jesus went, the power of God was with him. Just like today, wherever we go, the power and the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, is in us. It's with us. Those who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost has that power within them. And it's present no matter what time of day or night it is. Someone calls and, and they need prayer. That spirit, that power is within us. The power of the Lord is present at that time to, to do uh, what the Lord has called us to do. Then there was a man who was brought in a bed. A man which was taken with palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst of Jesus. There's some things here I want you to see and understand. In our lifetime, we're going to face Situations. We're going to face obstacles, trials, temptations, even people. A lot of times will be a hindrance in a way to us to where we can't really get to the Lord. But yet there are, there are those who should have compassion and love and concern for those who are in need. This man had some friends who cared about him. Friends who loved Jesus just as much as this man did. And they brought this man there because they knew that he could get touched by the hand of God. We need more Christians today who will have compassion and love to bring the people who are afflicted, whether it's a, a spiritual affliction, whether it's a physical affliction, no matter what the need is, we should be able to find a way to bring those people to Jesus. And when we, when we are working to do this, 
We're going to face opposition. We're going to face trials. We're going to face temptation. We're going to face things that's going to try to hinder us from getting that person yes, to Jesus. I have been working to try to get people to come to Jesus. And there's always an obstacle. There's always something there that seems like you can't get there. But I'll tell you, if we're willing and if we'll stand and fight, there is a way. There was a way to get this man to Jesus. They couldn't go through onto the, to the house. They couldn't get into the door. They couldn't get next to the house because of the people. The only thing they could do was get up on the roof. See, God will make a way. No matter what, I'm telling you, God will make a way yes, amen. if we have that desire for the lost, for the desire for those. God will make a way. Somehow, God will make a way that we can get those people to the church, that we can get them to where they can hear the Word of God, where they can uh, be fed. This man was in great need. This man was on a bed. This man were a couch and he, was, he had palsy. But thank God for somebody who cares, somebody who was willing to find, to seek a way to get that man to Jesus. It was important to get that man to Jesus. Let me tell you something, church. It's important that we get our loved ones to Jesus. But how do we get them there? But it's not easy. But we can find a way. There is a way. There was a way to get this man there. Even though they had to climb up on top of the house, take the tiles off the house, let the man down through the roof, but it worked because when they did that, they let the man down on his couch into the midst before Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Bringing people to Jesus. When he saw their faith, when Jesus saw the faith of these people, and he said unto the man, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Now wait a minute. The man was sick. The man had palsy. The man couldn't walk. They took him there to be healed. But Jesus said, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Well, now, what was the priority in this man's mind? What was the priority in these people's thoughts? For the man to be healed. But Jesus was showing them that the first thing that has to be done to any of us to receive the blessings of God, the blessings of God, healing is a blessing sent from God. It's a gift sent from God. But they had to meet the qualification. The qualification was this man had to be forgiven of his sins. That's why Jesus said unto the man, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Praise God. Praise God. See, sin is the worst enemy and the most evil thing that can happen to us in our life because it will rob us, it will cause us to not receive the benefits of of God. And the first thing was thy sins are forgiven thee. Well, here's the skeptics, here's the scribes and the Pharisees, just like we have them today, began to reason and say, well, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? See, they never, they, never, they never did accept Jesus. They never did believe Jesus. Now, they believed in Jehovah. They believed in God. But they couldn't accept the fact that God sent His Son into this world not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. People want to condemn and cast down and cast out. But Jesus didn't come to condemn us because we were already condemned, he come to seek and to save those that were lost. And that's the beginning of our whole spiritual life and being is first of all, we must repent of all sins and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now these Pharisees and these Sadducees or whatever, the scribes, 
They said, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? They call, he's accusing him to be a blasphemer. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Yes. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts. Now let me tell you something. You don't hide anything from God. You don't hide nothing from the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of palsy. Now, after he's been forgiven sins, then Jesus says, this, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. <laughs> How about that? And immediately, immediately he rose up before them, took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glory, find God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with their hearts, or were filled with, excuse me, were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. He said unto him, Follow me. God is so good. In the third book of John, chapter 2, Jesus said, Behold, or the writer said, Behold, I loose above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. See, if our soul was full of sin, we can't prosper. This man could not prosper in his healthy needs until first he had to get the sin out of his life. He had to get forgiveness. Matthew 9 and 35 says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness, and every disease among the people. That's what he came to do. He's more than just a savior. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is the son of God. He is our mediator. He is the one who will intercede before the Father in our behalf once we are born into the family of God and we have become a child of God. We have him there interceding for us. We need people here to intercede. Sometimes we don't have, I don't know how to say it, we, we get battered by the storms of evil and the weakness of this world and we get into situations that the devil will put depression upon us and the devil will bring all sorts of things against us and he'll work in our minds and, and it's hard to pray when these things are going on. But thank God for people who will intercede, become an intercessor. We need to believe in intercessory prayer. If somebody had not been praying for us today, where would any of us be today? But somebody, whether it was a mother, a grandmother, a grandfather, or even a friend, somebody prayed for us. We don't know whose prayer God answered but thank God somebody's prayer was answered because they were interceding for us. We wasn't interested in praying and talking to the Lord. We was out and having fun and we were out in sin and we were all wrapped up. But somebody prayed. Somebody interceded. Thank God somebody touched Amen. the throne of God for us and that's why we're here today because of somebody's prayer. It's a good old saint good old grandmother or grandfather or, or a friend, somebody, a father or a mother, somebody prayed for us. Somebody prayed for me. Yes, Lord, amen. Thank God for those who pray. In Luke 6 and 19, and it says, And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. If we want help, that's where we go. He is the source. 
Because Hebrews tells us in the 13th chapter of Hebrews, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Amen. the days to come, our, our lot of time on earth, whatever those days may be, Jesus Christ will be the same every day. He don't change. People are trying to change their standards. God don't change. He's the same. What it took years ago, when it, whatever it took in the 40s and the 50s and the 70s and 80s, it's still going to have to take the same for the 20s. For the future to come, it takes the same. We know that what Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and 24, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Crucifixion was one of the cruelest ways of death and punishment that's ever been known. It's horrible. But Jesus bore that suffering. He bore that agony. He bore all that pain just for us today that we could be set free, that we could have a life and have an abundant life, have a good life. And not only for our soul and our spirit, but for our bodies when we are sick and we're, and we're in a bad shape. Just remember that He bore those stripes for us, for our healing. He did that for us, church. We have something to be thankful for. We have something to praise Him for today. What a wonderful Savior. David said in Psalms 103 and 3, Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, and who heals all thy diseases. The devil will not let you forget your past life. Yes. But I'm telling you, if you can reverse your thoughts and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have repented and given your heart unto God, that's what you've got to do. Because the Word of God is true. It will stand when this world is on fire. When He begins to purify this old earth for the new heaven and the new earth, that Word is going to stand. And if the writer said, if David said, who forgiveth all thine and all thine iniquities? All thine iniquities. There's not one iniquity that will be left uncovered, but they all are covered by the blood. Not only that, but he healeth all thy diseases. Brother Bill, let me share something with y'all this morning. I know, I've known this family not all my life, but for the 49 years that my wife and I were married, this family was my wife's neighbors. They went to school together. They grew up together. And her oldest son had uh, a tumor in his colon, and they had to remove it, and they they put they put the bag the bag on, and he'll have to wear it wear that the rest of his life because of where the surgery was and all. He would never still be able to control. On top of that, they did a CT scan. They did an MRI. They found four spots on his liver. He went Thursday and had two major surgeries in one. They went in and they removed three of the spots. But that fourth spot was in a place to where he would have had to went through a third major, major surgery. And when they went in and removed the three, they could not find the fourth one. And people say, well, I thought God, when he done something, he did it complete. No, what he did, he removed the spot that would have probably could have caused that young man his life. 
because it was major, major surgery. It was a place to where it would have been very difficult to have gotten into unless they would have just opened him up and took his liver out and laid it out. But God healed him. He had surgery on Thursday, two major surgeries. He came home yesterday. Two days after surgery, he came home. Now that's God. See, that's God. That's how God worked. The devil will fight us. The devil will put things in our mind. That, that I've even had the devil tell me, well, you're having a heart attack, and, and this is going on, and that's going on, and, and you're not going to live long, and all, all this stuff. I, ha I have these battles. I have to fight these things in my mind. But I'm here. And I've been paying attention to some things that's been going on. For the last several times, and the last time that I've checked my blood pressure, it's been in the 20s, like 123, 124, over 66, 67. My heart rate's been down in the 60s. And I feel great. See, that's what God can do. <laughs> But I'm telling you my experience, if we'll sit around and let the devil feed this stuff into our minds, we'll just fall over dead, basically. <laughs> you know, you'll get all scared and you, you'll ponder and you'll wonder and you'll get stressed out and that's not good. Your blood pressure will go high and you could have a stroke and you could have this and have that. Stress is terrible, but it's not of God. God did not put that on us. That's the devil. <laughs> and we need to get mad at the devil and shake our fist in the devil's face and say, devil, get away from me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to serve God no matter what. Amen. If I go or if I stay, I'm going to be better off. <laughs> We've got to have that determination. We've been beat down. that We've allowed the devil to just about destroy us. But remember, have faith in God. Have faith in God. This man faced circumstances. His friends faced circumstances. They couldn't get the man into the house. <laughs> the priority was get this man to Jesus. That's our priority. Get ourselves to Jesus. And church, let's help to get people to Jesus. People are struggling. People are fighting. People are are under the control of the, of the enemy and we've got to press our way through all of this and get that person to Jesus. If we do have to climb up on the house and take the roof off and go down that way. But there is a way. There's a way to get there. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Bless you. Oh, glory to God. There's a way to get there. I'm telling you, you can find a way. There is a way. God said He'd make a way. Where there seems that there is no way. He'll make a way. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't it good to feel the presence of the Lord? Isn't it good to know that God is in the house? Yes, thank you, Lord. Isn't it good? And let me tell you something. The devil's a liar. He's the father of lies. That's what started the curse of sin was a lie. <laughs> Psalms 103 and 3. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Isaiah 53 and 5 said, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. His stripes. We are healed. Jeremiah was an old prophet. But in the 17th chapter of Jeremiah, in verse 14, Jeremiah had to cry out unto the Lord. You know what Jeremiah said? Heal me. O Lord, I shall be healed and save me. And I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. What's your praise today? Who are you praising today? Yourself? Or someone else? Let's praise the Lord. 
Let's praise Jesus. We are to enter His courts with praise and thanksgiving. We are to glorify Him and to magnify Him. Why do I sing the courses? Because I want you to know when you come into the house of God, we come into a place to where we worship and praise Him for all the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. Let me tell you something. A church that won't praise God won't have no spirit in it. Because God inhabits the praises of His people. You start praising God and the Holy Spirit will come in and abide there and you'll be blessed and you'll be touched. Because <laughs> where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, right? Jeremiah said, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved, for Thou art my praise. Then Jeremiah went on to say in the 30th chapter in verse 17, For I will restore health unto thee. This is what God said to him. I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. And these are not physical wounds. These are not just cuts and things like that. But our spirits get wounded. People can wound us. People hurt our feelings. And sometimes those wounds are so deep that you hardly can even bear of forgiving people for sometimes their rudeness and the cruelty. But you know what? God said, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Oh, I see the healed of yeah. shot. Oh, if you've been wounded this morning, I want you to know that God can heal your wounds. God can heal you. You've got to let it go. You have to release it. You can't hold on to it. I've had harsh things. I've, I've, I've had people who were so cruel and ugly. But you know what? At the time, I was hurt. I go off and cry. But you know what? God is the healer. God will heal those wounds. My mama wounded me real bad when I was a child, spiritually and physically. And I, 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 I hated her. I literally hated her. I wanted her dead. When I got saved, the Lord reminded me that I had to forgive her. And I did. And you know what? Before she passed away, she asked me to forgive her. That's what God can do. He'll heal those wounds. He'll do that. He'll do just exactly what he told Jeremiah he would do. But everything that happens, happens on conditional terms. You go to the bank and you borrow money, you got to make all these contracts and you set up all these conditional terms and if you'll meet these terms then we will we'll do this. But you have to sign a contract. We have a contract with God. And it goes all the way back into the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26. And God said to Moses, and Moses said, And if thou wilt dil diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. In Proverbs 4 and 20. And 21 and 22 says, Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. And David reminded us in Psalms 107 and verse 20, and I think we covered that this morning in our Sunday school lesson. He sent his word and healed them 
and deliver them from their destruction. Yes. There's people today that's in destruction. They're being tore down and tore apart, and it's like there's no hope. But God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. There was a centurion in the New Testament in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 8 and 8, I believe it is, that the centurion answered and said to the Lord, or said to Jesus, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my, thy, my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. He had faith. Do you have faith today? James said in James 5 and 14 and 15, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. He didn't say call the pastor, call the bishop. Call the elders. Call the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And Mark tells us in Mark 16, 17, and 18, and this is something that I, I, I pay attention to. When we look at churches, and every church is a part of the body of Christ. We're all supposed to be ministering to the same thing. But we're not. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. Oh, we don't believe in that. We don't believe in healing. We don't believe in speaking in tongues. We don't believe in this. That, that all went out when the apostles died. We, we don't believe that. Uh, I, I, they've even gone so far as to blaspheme and say, well, speaking in tongues is of the devil. That's dangerous. That's blasphemy. You're calling the Holy Spirit a devil. So you can blaspheme God, you can blaspheme Jesus. If you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you, you, have no, you have no hope no more. And that's, that's bad. And that's bad. And, and I don't want you to get your thoughts into to something here, but... Uh, in this world. What, where is the signs? Signs will follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. False doctrine is deadly. You don't have to be quinine or some kind of poison to take. It don't have to be a snake. The devil's a serpent. And all the demons of his are serpents, right? <laughs> so don't be taken up this stuff. Even if it was a real serpent, we'd be like the Apostle Paul when the viper latched on to him and he shook it off in the fire. They thought he was going to fall over dead. But he didn't. But anybody else would have done it, they probably would have died instantly. See, that goes to show you what the hand of God will do. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And I'm not saying to tempt God and handle snakes and drink poison and stuff, but it's just by accident. If it just it happens by accident, God will take care of us. It shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is what's going to be happening in the church. Where is it? When's the last time you saw a miracle? When's the last time you've seen any of this happen? Sister Holly, I don't know. <laughs> you don't you don't see it much anymore. And people people are drilling away. Because 
they don't see any hope. And we're responsible. We are responsible. So, my thought is, overcome your circumstances. Whatever is standing in your way, find a way to go around that. Find a way to go over that. When they got to that house, there was multitudes gathered around that house. Jesus was inside. And they couldn't get through the crowd with that couch. But God inspired somebody to go up on the roof. Take the tiles off. Let the man down through the roof. See, if we're determined, we can get to Jesus. But you have to have a determination to get around your circumstances. Am I right? Thank you. And you can get there. I'm telling you, you can get there. It's not easy. You have to get by or take it by force of the Spirit. <laughs> so, that's what the Lord's given me to share with you this morning. And I pray that it's been a blessing to you. I hope that I've encouraged you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm not here to discourage you. I'm here to encourage you with the Word of God and let you know there's hope for all of us. The Bible says all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. It don't matter if I'm standing up here behind this rostrum or not. I have sinned and came short of the glory of God. And I'm... I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that I haven't sinned. I have sinned. The Bible declares I have sinned. The Bible says we all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. <laughs> thank God for Jesus. Thank God for salvation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come and thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We thank you today for these that have come to be with us. But most of all, Father, we thank you for Jesus, the Savior of our souls, the healer of our bodies, and the deliverer of our hearts and souls. And Father, we just ask you, Lord, that a seed may have been planted, hope has been in, in, in planted in the hearts of each one of us, Lord, that when trials and persecutions come, Lord, we can always see that ray of hope that's in on the inside of us, Lord, and that we can rise up above our circumstances. Lord, remember those, Father, they're not here today. Day. Touch them in their bodies, mind, soul, and spirit, Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord, to touch your mission and break the mighty way. We ask this all in Jesus' name.